when I arrived in Real Madrid, do you know how many players played quarter-final of Champions League? Xabi Alonso with Liverpool and Iker Casillas with Real Madrid and Cristiano Ronaldo with, uh, with Manchester United. All the others, not even a quarter-final. That's football heritage. I have to say this. We have top players. And um, I'm sorry, I'm a bit arrogant. We have a top manager. Again, don't, please don't call me arrogant because what I, I'm saying is true. I'm European champion, so I'm not one of of the bottle. I must. I think I'm a special one. Battle not with monsters, lest ye become a monster. And if you gaze into the abyss, the abyss gazes also into you. The self-proclaimed special one has had his fair share of special moments and media controversies, like when following a Champions League tie between Chelsea and Barcelona in March 05, Mourinho accused the referee and then Barcelona coach Frank Rijkaard of breaking FIFA rules by having a private meeting at halftime. Mourinho said that this meeting later caused the referee to send off Chelsea striker Didier Drogba in the second half. The referee after stated that Rijkaard had indeed tried to speak to him, but he refused and sent him away. Well, the ref soon retired after receiving numerous death threats from this one incident, leading some officials in FIFA to release a statement calling Mourinho an enemy of football. After an investigation, Mourinho was given a two-match touchline ban for his behavior, and both Chelsea and the manager were then fined by UEFA. How do you explain the game today here in Stadio Olimpico? Look, the referee has to explain, but they don't speak. What, no, what no, did the referee no, no. do wrong? Did you watch the game? Yes, of course, but I want it from you. You see it from your... There was also that time when he met up with a defender, Ashley Cole, who was still playing for Arsenal, by the way. This happened in 2005. Mourinho was fined £200,000 for his part in the meeting with Ashley Cole. Apparently, the two had met to discuss transfer terms. Cole was under contract to Arsenal, though. And this was also against Premier League rules, so Mourinho was indeed going to get fined. Well, the fine came from 200,000 to 75,000 pounds, and as if this wasn't bad enough, he later labeled Arsenal manager Arsene Wenger a voyeur, basically calling him a creepy old man. He said Wenger was obsessed with Chelsea at the time. The Arsenal manager was furious to say the least and even considered legal action, but after a few years, the animosity fizzled out and the two managers made peace. Mourinho even apologized in 2014. Zlatan, why is Mourinho so special? Uh, why Mourinho is so special? Because, first of all, he's a winner. He has this winner mentality. He does everything to win. He knows the game. He reads the game well. He manipulates not the game, but the minds of his own players. And I remember when he came first time in Inter, he made everybody give 200%. But not for the team, not for the club, for him. And that for me makes him very special. So how did this prolific career start? He was first an interpreter for Bobby Robson at Sporting and Porto. Before gaining success as an assistant at Barcelona under Robson and his successor, Louis van Gaal. After brief stints as manager at Benfica and Unao de Leria, Mourinho returned to Porto in 2002 winning the Primera Liga twice, a Taca de Portugal, the UEFA Cup, and the UEFA Champion League. Porto's first European Cup title since 1987. It was a major thing, and that success earned him a move to England with Chelsea in 2004. Mourinho famously said, I, must, I think I'm a special one. I think I'm a special one, which came to be a popular nickname for him. With Chelsea, he won two Premier League titles, an FA Cup and two League Cups in three seasons before he departed in 2007. And the reason he left was disagreements with the owner, Roman Abramovich, who is no longer the owner of Chelsea at the moment. And in 2008, Mourinho joined Italian club Inter Milan, where he won a Serie A twice, including a European treble of Serie A 
the Coppa Italia and the UEFA Champions League in 2010, a first for an Italian club. This made him one of five coaches in the world to have won the European Cup with two clubs. And later that year, it earned him the first FIFA World Coach of the Year. Mourinho then moved to Real Madrid in Spain, where he won the La Liga between 2011 to 2012 with a record point, and therefore becoming the fifth coach to have won the league titles in four countries. He also won the Copa del Rey and the Super Copa de España. When I arrived in Real Madrid, do you know how many players played quarter-final of Champions League? Xabi Alonso with Liverpool and Iker Casillas with Real Madrid and Cristiano Ronaldo with, uh, with Manchester United. All the others, not even a quarter-final. That's football heritage. If you're still watching the video at this point, congratulations. Can you guys tell what team I support? I will leave a clue. Comment below. <clears throat> okay, back to business. So Mourinho left Real Madrid in 2013 and rejoined Chelsea. But I, I go back to a conversation. So I was in Portugal uh, before he come back in and there was rumours of him coming back in. And I got a phone call from him and I was sitting there having a, a, a meal with my wife and a glass of wine. And he said to me, JT, I'm coming, I'm coming home. This is his words to me. All right. And you're my captain. Now, I was on the verge of Crying. being... <laughs> <laughs> no, not on this one. Oh. I was on the verge of being forced out of Chelsea at this point for the Benitez one and all of that. Right. And I had like, a, I think, two years left on my contract and negotiations hadn't started, etc. And for him to, to pick up the phone and say, JT, you're my captain. Right. And regardless of what anyone else says, people people in the club tell me you can't play two games a week. You're my man. Right. I've never trained so hard in all my life to go back pre-season as fit as I was for him that year. When I talk about managers, I look at the best managers in the Premier League. So Alex Ferguson, how he dominated for years. Yep. There was one manager who ran the football club. It was him, very mm -hmm. clear. Yep. Mourinho, when he first came in at, at Chelsea, he was the man in charge. He won another league title, League Cup, but he was later dismissed in 2015 after a poor run of results with the club. It's crazy how football teams treat their managers, yeah? Remaining in England, he was appointed at Manchester United in 2016 and then Tottenham Hotspur in 2019. But his tenures at the club were both relatively short-lived. Tottenham Hotspur was much of a better club and Mourinho in fact said that he never felt at home there. I hope the Tottenham fans don't get me wrong, but the only club in my career where I don't have still a deep feeling with his Tottenham. Despite this, Mourinho won the UEFA Europa League, League Cup and FA Community Shield in his first season with Manchester United. He even led Tottenham, the Benta club, to the final of the League Cup, where he was fired less than a week before the finals. He was soon hired by Roma and won the inaugural UEFA Europa Conference League. This made him the first manager to win a major European competition with four clubs and the third manager to win three main UEFA club competitions. So at this point, the man was still successful. So let's do a short recap here. In the last 24 years, Jose has coached 10 world-class clubs, three in Portugal, two in Italy, three in England, one in Spain, and now in Turkey. On the 1st of June, 2024, Turkish side Fenerbahce confirmed that Mourinho had officially begun negotiations with the club over being the head coach. On the following day, he was revealed as being the head coach officially and presented to the fans during a special ceremony at the Sucru Sakra Lokoglu Stadium. I'm sorry if I butchered that Turkish word. But yes, he is now the coach, the head coach at Fenerbahce, which is now the second best team in the Turkish league. I only said the second because they lost to Galatasaray, who is now on top of the league. And then this also brings me to one of my other points now. Is Jose really the special one? Now I know there is another notable coach or manager by the name of Pep Guardiola. Right now, he is the manager or coach of Manchester City. He has, in fact, just won his fourth Premier League in a row. Uh, he went to the UEFA Champions League semi-finals this year. And uh, last season, Manchester City won the treble. So they won the 
Champions League, they won the Premier League, as well as an FA Cup, I believe. So Pep Guardiola is amazing. In fact, he is up for the running when it comes to being the best coach in the world. He also coached Barcelona back in the day. But I feel like Jose is much better than him, not because he has done more in his career, but I just feel like with Jose, it's a natural talent. It brings me back to the whole Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi debate. Some people say that Ronaldo is a workhorse, whereas Messi just has natural talent. Think about it. You get your Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, who had the charisma. I mean, Muhammad Ali was loved by everyone, not just people who liked boxing like Mike Tyson. Although Tyson is now become a chore and most people like him. It brings me back to Goku and Vegeta. Vegeta, for those of you who watch anime, Vegeta was a character that really trained very hard and he is in fact loved by a lot of people. But Goku just seems to be one step ahead of him, naturally strong. Think about Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. I don't know, maybe it's just my theory. In fact, it brings me back to one final uh, debate. It's between God and the devil. If you think about it, the way God does stuff, you know, if you read the Gospels and the way Jesus does stuff, there is nothing forced. But with Satan and Lucifer, you get people selling their souls and doing all types of nonsense to get things here. But with God, you know, it's all about patience. It's all about love. It's all about being kind. Think about it. Wenger complaining uh, is normal. Mathematically, and I was not too bad in math, uh, that's uh, quite difficult to understand the logic of his statement. You know, they, they like to cry. That's, that's tradition. I'm embarrassed for him. Honestly, honestly, I don't listen to what he said. I think boring is, is 10 years without a battle. It's very boring. Push and shove. Mm -hmm. Oh, he is a specialist in failure. Uh, I'm not. I am Jose Mourinho.